The average high school football player has 652 hits to the head a season. The overall athlete himself has gotten bigger, faster, stronger. In a sport with extensive physical contact. You know, your impacts are obviously going to be harder. Constant upkeep is required. A lot can happen in a year. If you can put a helmet on, it may have a little crack in it. We don't see. Which is why coaches send their helmets off for an annual checkup. Helmets arrive in a reconditioning and recertification plant like this one. We take in about 25,000 helmets a year. Over 4,000 of them don't make it. We're disposing of these helmets. Tucker Manufacturing currently recertifies helmets from 15 states and three SEC teams. During the process, helmets are checked to make sure each part is functioning properly. The worst thing a coach could have is to lose a kid. Schools spend an average of $2,500 on helmet reconditioning and recertification. Then add in the additional cost of replacing the rejected helmets with new ones. You know, if, we're, if you're sitting here talking about money, well, we're talking about a kid's life, you know, and a kid's, you know, well-being. So it's worth every penny to us. The process starts and ends with the drop test. It has an accelerometer inside the head, and it gives you a severity index number. A scientifically accepted measurement of human injury tolerance. It basically measures g-force over time. An impact equivalent to that of a player running 12 miles an hour into a flat surface. Next, all parts and decals are removed. We have to take all the stickers off. Some we buff off. We just get them down to the shell. Helmets are continuously searched for defects. Are they typically the cracks that tiny? Here's the thing, it's, it's cracked and it's going to get worse. We have no control over how long this school is going to wait to send this helmet back in. Yeah. So we've got to take it out. Each internal part is also inspected and cleaned. It recycles water and it heats it up to a certain temperature where we're going to be killing a lot of the bacteria. Helmets are repainted and internal parts reinstalled then inspected and tested again. When I get ready to pack them, I check them in the inside to make sure that everything is in the inside of them and should be there. If all the little caps are on them, all the screws are in them. Finally, recertification stickers are placed on approved helmets, which are then shipped back to schools, a four to six week process. We do it every year, we don't take a chance. It costs to play this game. But let me tell you something, <laughs> the cost is, is well worth the, the chances of of uh, something happening to a, to a kid for not having the proper helmet. Tonight at 10, we'll show you who's responsible for making sure your child's helmet is actually being reconditioned and recertified. Plus, why you need to know the helmet laws in this state. Britton Lynn reporting tonight at 10 in part two of her series, Britton explains who's responsible for making sure that your child's helmet actually gets reconditioned and recertified each year. What you need to know about the law. We'll be right back.